always like a light. The light's been really over me lately. A lot of photos. What is that? Is that my hair up like that? Oh no, that's like the lamp. There's like a... That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, I just decided to go live spontaneously because I haven't cooked for you guys in a minute. And I'm doing chili because I'm kind of on a budget. Um, you know, for a few days. So, I figured I'd just show you guys really qu quickly how to do some chili, and then we'll do a scripture later. Hey, baby. You're on camera. You're on camera. <laughs> so, first I got a jalapeno. You guys see in the thumbnail that I put basically the ingredients that I'll be using. Um, this um, chili man... Um, is really good because the only ingredients this one has in it is chili peppers, granulated onion, spices, salt, and granulated garlic. None of that maltodextrin, sodium chloride, all that other stuff. So that's a really good one. I'm going to use that. I think I had another one in here already, which is, it was like a, it's a taco seasoning, but I want the chili flavor. See, for example, this one has monosodium glutamate yellow corn flour which is fine but um you know silicon dioxide dextrose you maltodextrin those things are really bad for you you don't need all of that crap and some seasoning you just need some ground up you know spices and so chili mac you guys go for this one it's just seasoning nothing else um, I'm going to throw a jalapeno in there because I like the jalapeno flavor. Um, where's my... real quick and I'll pull a scripture um I hope you guys can hear me I like to save these things for compost you guys can always donate your compost to a local community garden or a, a local farm or something like that if, if you don't have your own garden or backyard where you know you keep up with your plants or the food that you grow you can donate your compost you know or put it somewhere where you know things are growing you may have a spot where you go where there's flowers or something growing you can put it there you know just waste not want not trust me that's a great philosophy to live by waste not want not um yeah rico waste not want not tell them um, and I, <laughs> I'm going to keep the seeds in here. I'm, I might even save a few because I've been saving. So I'm just going to take this and save those seeds to, I'll let, I'll let one of my friends explain how I can grow jalapenos from those seeds. Because I know different seeds grow differently. Some you can start with water, some you plant in dirt, some you got to let germinate this, that, and, and the third. So I'm going to give these fairly rough chop and the seeds are going to make the chili really spicy and I'm just doing some simple chili. I'm, I would usually put like corn and you know maybe a few other things but I already got blue corn chips that I like. I like blue corn chips so I didn't need the extra corn. What I'm going to do is this up a little bit more because I eat like a bird. So I like my stuff kind of chopped up, but that's looking good. All right. That's that. So, oh, I'm just going to, what you can do here, 
you just, you know, throw your stuff in the pot like that. Once you're done with it. That way everything gets in. Right? Clean your surface off. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to go back. Yeah, I cleaned my stove too. <laughs> so you guys know when I clean my stove, except that there might be a little leftover stuff from when I made the soap earlier. Um, so next I'm going to put the meat in there. So what I'm going to do is No. No, I'm just going to go ahead and throw the meat on. I'm going to move these off the stove because they'll melt. Keep those off the heat. That's just, actually I can put these in the fridge. I got some, some fresh guacamole and pico de gallo and guacamole from the store. You know, the fresh made. Um, and this I use as dip. So once I make the chili, I put the chili on my plate. I put some guac, some, some pico de gallo put some cheese over it and then I eat it with the um, blue corn chips. So that's how I do that. So just gonna and I just got a little bit of ground beef for my chili because I've been doing a lot of working out. Um, this is um, doesn't say it's like it's just a little less than a pound it's probably um I don't know it might be like two thirds of a pound it's just a little bit of ground beef so I'm gonna just go ahead and throw that in there it'll reduce a lot I might not even need all of this but since I got it for the chili, I'm just going to go ahead and make me a lot of chili in it. It'll be all right. All right, that there. I'm going to fork to make me chili. <laughs> um, I'm gonna heat down a little bit so I can mix the meat up with the jalapenos here. I'm gonna turn it up a little more now. And just kind of make sure it, it cooks evenly and make sure there's um, it doesn't get too chunky as it as it heats up kind of grind it as you go. So I'm gonna keep the moisture in. I'm gonna let that cook for a couple minutes. And I got the, oh, um, Lucerne is a good, is a good um, dairy company, decent, I suppose. But I got the Mexican style one, which is Monterey Jack cheddar, queso quesadilla, and asadero cheeses. everywhere all right um diced fire roasted tomato with some seasoning and juice and like I said this this has like other stuff in it but I like fire roasted it's got like calcium chloride citrus acid citric acid you know just stuff for preservatives it's not the worst so, so I take off the top As you can see it's cooked cooking you know, but you just want to kind of make sure as it cooks, it 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 grounds a little bit better. It gets more ground, more grainy, so to speak, and more separated. So definitely keep stirring it. You know, I like mine. I don't like mine too chunky. I just want the meat to kind of almost like be like a seasoning. But it'll be it'll be thick. But I don't want it like I don't want chunks of meat, big chunks. I just like it nicely ground up. But you guys can do whatever type of texture, you know. But um, the jalapenos will cook. Since these are fresh jalapenos, this way the jalapenos will be nice and tender by the time the beans and tomatoes cook in 
with the meat and so and the meat's still cooking too and at this point you could even add um the tomatoes but what i'm gonna do is as it's still cooking since it's almost no more pink i'm going to that right there i'm going to add the chili mac seasoning um sometimes you don't need oh and it, it, look how it looks it looks nice oh i think my is about to die shit All right, so I don't, I don't know if I could rotate it. I'm when I do that. I always do that with you guys. Um, let me just try and like pop this up somewhere like that or something. I don't know. You guys can hear me? Yeah. I always do this when I'm doing this. Why this always happens every time I'm doing it live? Alrighty. Um, but no, like, look at, I just want to show you guys, it's just freshly ground, none of that other crap, you know what I'm saying, you could tell. So I'm just going to throw that in there, it smells really good, so I'm just going to, I don't want to overdo it, because I got other stuff to add. But I like to season the meat, so the other ingredients still have their individual flavor, I like the taste of kidney beans, um, might be that might be gross to some people but i do i love kidney beans and i like the taste of tomatoes i'm a tomato freak um you guys will probably never see me cook anything without tomatoes maybe but rarely most things it's one of those things um we'll talk about what that has to do with blood and, and anemia tomato cravings but that'll be for another or after i'm done with this and see how um Turn this heat down because it's probably should have did that a little earlier, but I just want to show you all how it's already like pretty nicely seasoned. You don't need too much, um, but you can just at this point you can just taste a little bit and see how 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 it measures out to your your um, salt preference. Mmm. 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 Really good. Alrighty. I'm actually just gonna throw in a little bit more just because I really like this seasoning. I like the, the flavor of it. I'm just gonna throw in some more. I want actually I'm just gonna put it all in because even though it's not that much meat, if I had a little more meat, it would it would be cool. But since since um like I said, I got the pico de gallo, fresh to, fresh um, pico de gallo and guacamole to balance out the, the sodium. And this will keep the give the kidney beans a nice flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and throw those in. Now I'm going to put that there and I'm going to even reduce the heat just a little. Now. The heat's, heat's decent right now. Oh, hope you guys can hear me. Um... Right, the beans. Then I'll throw the tomatoes in. This can opener is like a family heirloom. I've had I, I remember having this can opener when we when I was like maybe 10, 11, 12. So change the view. Um, let me see if I can show you guys how to drain. All right. So you tilt the top here and, you know, make sure it's collecting like all the veggies and stuff. Tilt the top. Don't cut yourself because these edges are really jagged and you will cut yourself and, and you never want to do that, especially with metals. Um, and get 
you know, tetanus or whatever. But um, so, yeah, drain out all that preservative crap that you really don't need. You know, some may, you know, this it's a good way to just kind of hold in the vegetables and drain, you know, all the way till it gets to the bottom. I'm doing it with one hand. It's a lot easier with two, but I want to show you guys how to do this and make sure you know get all of that crap out of there and make sure um you you pour some water in there and rinse because there's still going to be more you know um that preservative stuff at the bottom see Oh, I'm losing some beans. It's fine. But, you know, shake the can around and get to the bottom of it, you know. Um, see, it's still a little pink there and stuff. That's, I don't like that crap. So I'm just going to shake, shake, shake. Shake, senora. <laughs> like that Beetlejuice. I love Beetlejuice. All right, let me stop losing my beans here. But, you know, let me, I just wanted to reiterate the importance of doing that. See if I can tilt you guys for a second. Ooh. I don't know if it's. Are you guys right there? I hope you can still hear me all right. I'm going to just rinse pull the top off here. Like I said, get a good rinse. Just get a good rinse on, on everything. So you do this. All right. You guys watch my food. <laughs> Make sure I don't burn anything. Just getting to the bottom of all that preservative stuff. And you, you know, the, another way you can do it is if you have a strainer, which I actually do have. Um, I guess I can just show you guys that as well. My hands are getting wet. It's probably not like the smartest. All right. If you want to be smart and, you know, work smarter, you can get a strainer. See, like, look at how much stuff there's still in there, all that preservative stuff that you know um just get a strainer and, and that works out just fine these remind me of indiana jones and um the last crusades i believe or it was it was, it was one of them where the monkey was eating the the dates or the those poisonous anyway um Oh, my bad. All right, beans are in. And let's uh, strong arm things today. So, ooh, let me not, let me not hurt myself. <laughs> anyway, that one's a, a pop top. Alrighty. Um, so put the tomatoes in there with the beans. The, the tomatoes have some seasoning in it, and um, and since I'm gonna be eating this for a couple days, some sometimes some preservatives do help in it. So you know the tomatoes already have um some some extra preservative stuff in there but they also have that seasoning so i want to keep that in there and all this is going to go in recycling and we're going to turn the heat up and we're going to mix everything up all right mix everything up and this is going to basically be it like i said i would add corn maybe bell pepper onion but since like i said i'm on a budget and guacamole and pico de gallo 
already has onion in it. Guacamole is basically avocado mixed with pico de gallo. That's basically what guacamole is. Um, those things already have diced onion as well as jalapeno depending on how spicy you get it. So I don't want to overdo it. And that got the blue corn chips. But if you were doing chili in a traditional way, you would throw some corn in there, bell pepper, um, even a little tomato paste for some people. Um, or puree if you prefer yours a little more runny. Um, and, you know, things like that. So some people let, might want to throw in mushrooms to make it hearty or, you know, something like that. Some people even, I was talking in the, in the store with this, this cute black guy. He was, he, he thought, cause I was kind of like, I was just like this and I had my socks on. So you guys know how it goes with the socks. But I just, I went for a walk and everything. Um, and he was, he was talking about his headphones, the Dre headphones, the Beats. And I was like, thought he meant Beats, like the nasty vegetable and everything. So it just like gave me an idea that those of you who are more vegetarian or you're, you're trying to, you know, include some, some, you know, more, you know, more healthier things, you could throw something like Beats in there. If, if that's your thing, I think they're nasty. But in something like chili, you can put certain things in and mix it in and, and it'll still be a good dish. Especially if you're a vegan or vegetarian. You can always do um, seitan, tofu. Um, chili is a great vegan veg veggie dish. But I needed some some protein, some ground beef. That's, I, I, you know, this is going to last quite some time for me. And my, I think... You know, when you're when you're coming on your cycle, even like two to three weeks ahead of it, you might get cravings for meat to sustain you um, through your menstrual because you, women lose a lot of iron in our menstrual. And so chocolate, um, you know, of course, beef, um, you know, and, and it may sound funny but that are red, you know, cayenne, tomatoes. Uh, pepper, you know, things that are red w will help with, um, you know, the loss of iron. Um, you know, if anyone knows a little bit more about dietary things and maybe the color red in, in vegetables contains a, an amount of iron, I don't know, but that's just how my body goes. My body tends to also eat based on color. You know, and you know, color is very significant um, in terms of the the different properties that the the fruit or vegetable has. Just like you know, plants are green because of the concentration of chlorophyll. You know, um, black people are dark because of the concentration of melanin. Um, you know, which again, it's it's great to eat darker um fruits and vegetables the blacker the bear the sweeter the juice so of course that's why you would want darker fruit but um when it comes to vegetables as well you know the the more potent um antioxidants and, and health um supplements minerals vitamins are in the darker foods purple potatoes or yam as opposed to the white you know, or yellow potatoes, um, black garlic, as opposed to the white garlic, which, which actually, you know, depending on who you ask, could be bad for you. And another thing I want to reiterate, garlic does not ward off vampires. It actually could attract vampires. Garlic is not something that you can use to, to ward off vampires. Garlic does help clean your blood, which is why vampires like garlic so don't think the use of garlic will ward off vampires garlic is good for cleaning your blood you got that very important no metaphysically for mages um if you want to get rid of vampires um silver uh, it, it, you know the cross is the number one thing you know and if you have a t in your name that would really help as well if you want to 
protect yourself from vampires make sure that you don't invite them into your home or even into your life um salt carry around salt on you um you know certain gemstones will help but again you got to really know what you're doing when you're trying to protect yourself against vampires because there's a lot of myths that have been put out by the elite society which is mostly parasites and vampires all right um th all these myths have been put out by them so they can easier get to humans you know so again silver I'm being told silver works on werewolves, not necessarily vampires. You want to get rid of a vampire, you need gold. Gold, not silver, because vampires are parasites and they feed off of lunar energy, which operates through silver. Gold is solar energy, and it empowers solar energy, and vampires are allergic to the sun, depending on what level they are. Um, if they're a day drake... Drake's Dracula is if they're a day Drake, that means they're a day walker. They're like blade, they're they probably black. Um, but if you're dealing with the recessive parasite minions, they're allergic to sunlight. So silver does not work on vampires. You need gold and you need the cross. Um holy water, yes, holy water will work as well. Um but you got to find it. I got some holy water, <laughs> but you got to find it. Or, you know, the best thing if, with holy water is immerse yourself in holy water. So they, the vampires can't get to you. That's the best way that holy water can work. All right. So that went in another direction. But um, the chili's cooking. It's looking good. So I pretty much just going to let this simmer and show you guys. Yeah, that looks really good. It's going to be really good. Everything's going to simmer. I taste some. I love kidney beans. And these are the dark red ones. Blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. And the darker the, the vegetable, the, 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 the richer the mineral. You know, if, if you have a, a, a lighter version of something as opposed to a darker version of it, so to speak. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. yeah we're good to go um I, it really doesn't even need to simmer too much i don't want to overdo it since i'm going to be eating off of it for a few days um i don't want to overcook it because i'm going to be reheating it so be mindful of that if you're going to be having leftovers don't don't overcook something the first time because as you reheat it, you still want it to have some level of freshness. There's nothing wrong with adding more salt to your leftovers as you cook them to reawaken the ingredients. So too much salt is not really bad for you. It really helps you. Too much sugar, the sugar, the secret sugar additives that are in everything fructose corn syrup all those secret sugar additives is what's bad for you but just salt regular salt um you know mountain salt pink himalayan uh uh sea salt pink sea salt gray sea salt you know what i'm saying sea salt these things aren't bad for you and it, it helps bring out the flavor and it will reawaken and refreshen your food that is left over um, so just be mindful of that. That's why you want to cook with a lot of, like I said, you know, there was the, the, the chili man, um, seasoning just had just what I needed. Nothing extra. Mm. Um, when you don't over cook your food or cook it at too high of a temperature, which is, trust me, something that I've been guilty of. I'm a fire starter. Um, but when you, when you don't cook it at too high a temperature and you let it simmer, you can eat it while it's still simmering. See, it wasn't too hot and I didn't burn my tongue. It was a nice flavor where it was nice hot, just like chili should be, but it didn't burn my tongue. Um, 
same thing if you're eating out if you're dining at a restaurant you want your food to be hot especially if it's something like a, a, a fajitas or a skillet or something that's supposed to come out sizzling um chicken tandoori but you don't want something to be so hot that you burn your tongue so remember especially the more upscale and fine dining you get your food should come out at right temperatures um you know so remember you get what you pay for but these are things that factor into dining and and you know culinary um, getting temperature correct so do that for yourself as well because your food loses nutrients if you burn it not only does it lose nutrients but you're actually consuming um carcinogens if you're eating burnt food now we love some cajun you know what i'm saying ain't nothing wrong with some cajun but um Remember, when you char your food, as delicious as it is, that is carcinogens, which is equivalent of smoking. All right? Um, be mindful of that. Be mindful of the temperature that you eat your food with. Be mindful of eating th too, ma too many charred things, especially for those of you who aren't smokers. Remember, you're still getting carcinogens from, from burnt food. Um, so take care of your body by taking care of the things that you put in it um so i'm not gonna make a plate um but if i did again it would be i guess i could just to show you guys i don't feel like it um but you know i would just i would put the pico de gallo chili guacamole cover it up with the cheese and um, maybe sprinkle some some lime salt or some fresh lime over the whole um, equation to help it add up. So I'm going to cover that. That's good to go. And I'm going to come in here, do some scripture. And I did find a dead butterfly on the ground, so I saved it. Um... So I can save the wings because butterfly wings are, um, you know, dead, dead butterflies and butterfly wings. That's actually a good smoke offering to, to get to the most high. Um, so, and then I found this quartz stone. You guys can hear me. All right. Oh, I was out as well. So, yeah, there's a butterfly and there's a, um, a quartz stone. It's like a crystallized quartz stone. It's in there. Pull it out. Yeah, so those butterfly wings. Um, and it, again, you can mix it with potpourri things like that, you know, always, like I said, waste not, want not. So when you're encountered, when, when you encounter death, you know, um, even, even dead birds, you know, make sure that, you know, you're, you're handling it with care because dead birds can have bird mites. Sometimes de birds die from bird mites, which is like a, t a type of parasite, you know what I'm saying? That they can get, it's, it's, it's kind of tragic, but, um, you know, they, they leave the body when the bird dies. So my point is be careful because you a lot of birds fall out the sky because of chemicals and everything, but you never know if it was bird mites or in, anything you handle that's dead. You, you want to make sure you know the cause so you don't get anything, you know, contagious or, you know, you just want to stay sanitary as much as possible. But again, when you're dealing with death, um, yeah, this is the, oh, this is the stone here. Just, you know, make sure you have something, you know, and you can, you can go on a death walk. Um, all right, we're talking about vampires and death walks, making chili, chili and scripture. But you can go on a death walk, which means you bring tools with you to collect a dead carcass. You know, your intention is to maybe find or come across a dead carcass. Again, it could be something as simple as a, a beautiful dead butterfly 
um but you know and and you collect it and everything and if you have a special place that you want to give it a, a burial you can or you can preserve it um if you embalm it you know sometimes you can freeze carcasses until um it's time for you to do a ritual with it um but you can um again use it as a, a burnt offering you can you know use as a burnt offering so remember this is dealing with the form of voodoo um as a smoke offering not a sacrifice not a sin offering which would involve slaughter but remember um you don't want to shed innocent blood so just like the most high presented abraham with a, a ram or a calf to sacrifice after he was going to be obedient and sacrifice his firstborn. Um, since he did not, well, well since the Most High um, showed mercy and, and, and he did not have to sacrifice uh, his firstborn, God presented him with a calf that he sacrificed but because he was obedient. So remember, going on a death walk, um, the Most High may give you the Holy Spirit that there's a carcass somewhere for you already, so you don't have to shed innocent blood. Jeremiah was a prophet who spoke against shed, the shedding of innocent blood in the temples, which was speaking about people slaughtering animals for all these sin offerings and, and sacrifices, when no, you need to stop sinning. You need to you need to change your ways, and that's why you gotta understand um, how voodoo works. It works the way it worked in the Old Testament, you know. So there are Africans doing it in that way with the Holy Spirit, but again, there's a lot of unclean spirits within within the tradition, within the covenant, really, which is kind of what voodoo is. It's really a blood covenant between God and the Hebrew Israelites. So let's try and be mindful of that. That's why I said those of you who do have mysteries of voodoo, you know, um, understand that's not for sale. You know, I would recommend making products and, you know, you can do lectures. Definitely, if you're at a point where you do lectures, you have literature, things like that. But remember, these are mysteries that people have to earn. This is not something for sale to be marketed. It's really not. So let's stop trying to popularize something that is really a blood covenant between God and his chosen people. Um, really, just stop. It, that's what voodoo is. It's the blood covenant between God and his chosen people. All right, y'all. Um, I think I better pull a scripture behind that, huh? All right, let's see what we got. Here's my... So I'm going to just do this. All right, we got Daniel chapter 2. Okay, it's, it, it, it kind of landed on Daniel 1 verses 21 to chapter 2 verses 1. So it's like 2, it's like 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. 1 verses 21, chapter 2 verses 1. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. That's the Eshu, the Eshkigel angel that I was telling you about, Esh, Eshu Legbara. That's the Eshu because that's his number, 121, you know. That's, 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 uh, that's SU, that's one of his digits, which is, you know, three, one, twenty-one, um, the one and the two. So again, there are mysteries to this. There are serious mysteries, <laughs> serious B mysteries, if you will, um, that it, it, it's not an, it, it's an oral tradition. A lot of times when you really get in mysteries of voodoo, you start speaking and the Holy Spirit starts speaking through you. It's not it's not something that you can find or record. It comes when it's supposed to and it leaves when it's when it's time to leave. You know, it's not something that you're supposed to um, materialize. You feel me? Um, so here we go. Daniel 1 chapter... Jan, Daniel chapter 1 verse 21 and Daniel continued on until the first year of Cyrus the king Cyrus and Daniel continued on until the first year of Cyrus the king chapter 2 verses 1 and in the second year of the kingship of Nebuchadnezzar 
Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, and his spirit began to feel agitated, and his very sleep was made to be something beyond him. Dream interpretation is an acceptable form of divination by the Most High, because in fact, that is how, that's one of the main ways that the Holy Spirit communicates um, to you through, through dreams, or that's one of the ways the Most High communicates to you, through dreams. Um, and that's why the prophet Daniel, as well as um, Joseph and his Technicolor dream coat, you know, Joseph, um, the, the tribe of Joseph, he, he rules dreaming. So those of you who may be under the tribe of Joseph, you may have the gift of dreaming um, or divining dreams and interpreting dreams, just like those under the tribe of the Levites may have the gift of being a high priest or priestess or a priest or priestess may have the, those abilities which deals with the rituals needed to communicate with the most high in, in, in a divine way. Um, those under um, Judah, who, who may be under the tribe of Judah, probably have royalty. Remember Judah produced the kings, King David, you know, so the king's um, line came through the line of Judah. So remember the 12 tribes of Israel, they all had something special to offer, you know. Um, and there was a tribe of Dan, <laughs> a tribe of Dan. But this is about Daniel. And I, I just want to say at this time that I did have a lucid dream where I, you know, defeated some of the forces. If you're ever dreaming and you, it's like you have to run away or escape a situation and for some reason you, you it's like you're running in slow motion nothing's stopping you but you're running in slow motion or it feels like you're running in water like you just can't speed up or like there's sludge or something holding you back but you can't see it those are those evil forces that are trying to affect you in reality or that are affecting you in reality um spirits of delay preventing you from getting away from a a situation that you may be trapped in or preventing you from getting away from from evil and, go, and going towards salvation. So you have to fight that that energy that may hold you back when you're making progress in a dream in any way, even if it's escaping a bad situation. So you know, and 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 I really fought those forces, and even in my dream, like I was trying to run away, and um, I I felt that that force kind of like. Um, trying to hold me back and then I like I ordered an uber in my dream because I was like I was fighting I was like no I'm and even the uber tried to like w was was being affected but then you know I, I like got away I got to my destination so that was really exciting I've been overcoming a lot of things I got attacked by a silver fish I post about it on Instagram I'm on Instagram now um but yeah I got attacked by a silver fish yesterday and it was an ordeal but like I said I've been under attack by these vampiric energies and so i guess this was a good way to kind of talk to you guys about that and, and also show you guys um another dish you can make when you're on a budget uh, you know um you know a lot of those ingredients cost a dollar or less you know less than a dollar so the, this is definitely a, a dollar store recipe but again when you're dealing with ground meat you don't want to skimp on that if anything get let your meat be of a decent quality. If you have to skimp on the quality of anything when you're on a budget, um, make sure that your meat is good quality because that will really affect your health and your mood and, and everything. And you want to try and, you know, if you're going to eat something for a few days, you want to make sure it, it it is healthy as possible so you still have the right energy, the right mood, Um you know, always put your health and your body first. Um, and again, if you, if you have even less options, praying over your food is the number one way to ensure that you get the nourishment that you need and, and nothing 
else. <laughs> Nothing bad. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Peace and love.